Yo, what's cracking, folks? Welcome to episode number 21 of The Painter and the Pixie. Yeah, episode 21. <laughs> it's yeah, awesome. Man. Uh, I'm your host, Jeremy Vassar, and as always, I'm joined by your other lovely host, Serena Vassar. Hi, hello. <laughs> and uh, so in this episode of the podcast, Serena and I are going to be talking about um, a little bit about Jordan Peterson, and particularly about his rule number two in his new book, uh, 12 Rules for Life, Life and Antidote to Chaos, which is... Uh, treat yourself uh, as if you were somebody responsible for helping mm -hmm. and uh, we kind of go through some how to develop frameworks to flourish and uh, particularly using the summer to set yourself up for yeah. kind of a good year set yourself up for success that yeah. is a huge part of self-care yeah and how to develop uh, kind of successful frameworks and and how to you know help yourself out looking yeah. at that stuff and yeah. and all that all that kind of jazz it's pretty good we yeah. had a good time hope yeah, you yeah. enjoy yeah all right guys Let's do it. This is only the beginning. All right. Ready? Ready. What you're going to hear about today is nothing short of a miracle. Well, I don't believe it. Let's find out. Ready, set, go. Ooh, buddy. Good afternoon, lady. How you doing? Good afternoon. Hello. I'm good, Jeremy. How are you? I'm doing well. See, I prefaced it with good afternoon because so whenever I whenever I say hello, girly, you say good morning, and it's never the morning when it, we do this. Well, these. it used to be. <laughs> we used to do it in the morning. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah. like three times. Yeah. Happy Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day to you too. Yes, yeah, so we've been having a you know a nice little setup here the last couple weeks where, yeah. um, you know, my brother took vacation uh, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And you were actually gone in Cleveland. I was. Yeah, um, visiting my your, sister. Your lovely sister. And uh, and then you came back with your shitty Cleveland cooties. I know. I got a cold. And, it was uh, no and fun. And brought it over here, which then I'm, uh, folks, that's... I contagioned I, you. If I, if I sound a little stuffy, <laughs> that's the reason. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I, I took it easy when my brother was on vacation. I didn't train jiu-jitsu. I like to give my body, like, once a quarter. Yeah, a Kind of no training to... Uh, you know, recuperate. And then the following week, I didn't train basically at all either because I was got walloped with this, this lovely cold. head cold situation. But yeah. it's, it's all good. Hey, I say so. this to everybody and I'm going to say it to you right now. <laughs> it's actually a really good thing to get a cold once in a while like that. Yeah, it's keep, a super healthy thing. You, you keep saying that. I didn't enjoy it and I uh, I'd prefer it not happen again. Yeah. So Yeah, you know, that's okay that you prefer those things and it's totally okay <laughs> to feel that it's unenjoyable. I agree with you. It was not so fun. Particularly with the person that brought it over here. Yeah, so, I know. Just saying. <laughs> Sorry. It's my bad. <laughs> You're like, it's basically like, you know, the, the Black Plague was good. It weeded out a lot of the weaker people, you know, strength. No, this no, that's <laughs> not at all. <laughs> the, the reason I say that is because you want your immune system to work once in a while. And I know you've heard this, but people listening may not have heard this, that it's okay. A lot of people come into my nutrition office and they're like, they think there's a very common misconception that when you're really, really healthy, you never, ever get sick. And that's just not true. If you never, ever get sick, oftentimes those are people who are the least healthy. Like you might feel good on the outside, but that's like your immune system's just not working for you. Right, right. So you want a little cold, three or four days you're down, not a huge fever, not any significant right, symptoms, right, yeah. you know, mild yeah. annoyance. And that's part of why it's so annoying because you're like, I'm not sick, sick. It's just a little bit. Yeah. Well, so I think we're I, back. We're feeling better. Yeah, it's, it's doing all, all right now. <laughs> all good. Cruised right through it. Mm -hmm. um, well, one of the things that we did last week was we got a chance to go see um, Jordan Peterson yeah, on Wednesday live at the Tower Theater Super down in cool. Philly. Uh, technically Upper Darby, but it's pretty much Philly. Mm -hmm. um, so, and for those that don't know, I believe we did an episode earlier. On, on Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson, I'm pretty sure. I don't remember. Because I remember the thumbnail <laughs> taking a picture oh, of his yeah. book. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna focus on he's so for those that don't know, Jordan Peterson is a clinical psychologist. Mm -hmm. He's also a professor at the University of Toronto. He is in the the cultural kind of zeitgeist right now. Yeah, he's very popular. Um, so more recently, he's be, become kind of a big Porsche or has been attributed to the intellectual dark web, which is a popular <laughs> term being thrown around now by Brett Weinstein and a few other folks. Um, so he was not, he didn't come up with that. He's not yeah. like trying to be on that. He just got grouped in with he these did. group of intel intellectuals. And um, it's always interesting to me to uh, see like he's controversial, mm -hmm. like Jordan Peterson. And we're going to talk about kind of, we're going to focus on, 
uh, one of the rules from his book, the the tour he was on is the 12 Rules for Life, yes. An Antidote to Chaos, uh, which is his newest book that came out. And he's kind of like on a book tour. Yeah. Um, so he did a talk and he went through and lectured on, he got through eight of the rules. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he did a Q&A at the end, which was great. It was so much fun. Um, I was, it was really enjoyable <clears throat> to be a part of that experience. It was. It was. I was actually way, I was pleasantly surprised yeah. at, uh, you know, at, at, how it was attended it was like mm-hmm. three thousand people the theater was packed and crazy. and i told you before we <laughs> rolled did. up because the what over the last year and year and a half i've gone to several comedy shows mm-hmm. and a couple of the comedians i went to jim jeffries particularly i went to like a late show and uh he's more of a purveyor of chaos yeah. than than order <laughs> he's like a comedian known for drinking and a kind of a party guy mm-hmm. in a late show people were just bombed like totally drunk a lot of folks were not in the best of shape and yeah. uh well you're you know, there to have a good time and be entertained yeah pretty rough so and it was the drunkest i'd ever seen wow. people and yeah, then that I, kind I, of stuff scares and me i bit. told you <laughs> at this event i was like look we're gonna roll in it's gonna be a <laughs> bunch of conservative white dudes yeah. and like dressed well and in shape and it, that was i get that was the most in shape crowd yeah, it was other than other than going to see mma fights because mm, mma yeah, fights everybody's from the gym pretty good shape there too um so uh so yeah but it was it was it, but it, it wasn't met, all just white people it was true. It was yeah. true. There's a few divert. I don't know. That, that was a, it was a heavily. Sc- it, was it was particularly it was. male. Yeah, I was a bit surprised by that. Honestly, um, a lot of these things, it's like females are super involved, but it's really awesome to see males yeah. want to improve themselves in a really healthy way. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and for for those that don't know, his his Jordan Peterson's principal message is like take more responsibility, yeah. uh, pursue what is meaningful before, uh, what's over expedient. what's expedient. So it's a big call, particularly to young guys yeah. to take on responsibility, be disciplined, kind of consistent effort over time and like hard work, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's not, it's nothing like, like revolutionary. Right. And I don't, I don't really, but it s- kind of is, you know, to it, these kids it, it is because kids the people home. that have been the most upset about what he's saying is uh, the people on like the postmodern yeah. side, like a really aggressive. Um, he's a big free, like free speech advocate. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely. So uh, which in Canada, they are they're doing something called forced speech and uh, which is definitely I a think compelled speech. Compelled is speech what it's called not so. forced. They're trying to make it sound softer and nicer. Yeah. Compelled yeah. rather than forced. But it's the same thing. Yeah. Anyway, I, I don't want to dwell too much on what jp is about as far as like what we really enjoyed yeah. going to see him and uh, i know you wanted to you actually made one of your vlogs you mentioned i did it. i talked about some of my thoughts in one of my vlogs recently if you guys want to see it just google serena vassar at jordan peterson and it'll pop up um about some of my thoughts on one of our his rules one of the some things that we experienced during the show and some thoughts about you know what he talked about yeah and um, some things we're going to talk about here today. Yeah. Yeah. So did you want to read off his 12 rules real yeah, quick? Yeah, I do. I want to introduce, for those of you who are not very familiar with Jordan Peterson, his book, 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos, is a really, I know Jeremy said this, but it's a really great resource. It helps you to think about things with a sense of purpose, in my opinion. Right. Because right. a lot of things these days are just kind of ethereal out there. You know, there's not a real truth to anything. What your truth is your truth. <laughs> is the mentality. And there is some validity to that. I don't want to completely shit on it. There's really, truly some validity to that. But there are truths that are universal, so to speak. Yeah. Well, and I think one of the issues that this whole like live your truth, mm-hmm. um, which is a very postmodern way of looking at things, the the issue that I have with it and that Jordan Peterson also has with it is that th- people are starting to treat anybody's truth as equal to anybody else's right and they're they're trying to say that there's no right or wrong way to do things and i don't want to get too far into that but there are certainly more optimal ways to do things right so it's it's like you you have seen this with nutrition yeah with fitness there are yeah you can do it a lot of different ways but Mm -hmm. there are more optimal ways to do it Mm -hmm. and there are um one of the things that he didn't mention in his Jordan Peterson's speech this go around, but I've heard him lecture on before. His YouTube's phenomenal. There's so many good. Mm-hmm. I'll link there. all that stuff for you guys. Um, uh, also, he's got a podcast that's kind of a republishing of a lot of the audio from mm-hmm. his lectures, which is that's pretty decent too. If you if you can't see the YouTube, um, but uh, you know you want to be pursuing a set of games mm-hmm. that by winning them, uh, it makes your life 
easier and and by winning them it's a more sustainable game long term so you want right not just making your life easier but the lives of the people around you who you're involved with that you touch and he's really big on alleviating unnecessary Mm -hmm. suffering because suffering is undeniable as part of the human experience so 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 i think that's enough of a lead up here but i wanted to read through the rules just so you guys kind of have an idea and then we're going to focus specifically on one of these rules here for our topic of the day sure Uh, so let's do this where you read you read the odds, I'll read the even. So we'll, okay. just, we'll just oscillate. You do one, then <laughs> I'll do good. the next one. Right? So rule number one is stand up straight with your shoulders back. Number two is treat yourself like you are responsible for... Oh wait, hold on. Treat yourself like someone you are responsible for helping. Number three, make friends with people who want what's best for you. Number four is compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not who someone else is today. Number five... Do not let your children do anything that makes you dislike them. <laughs> that, was, that was fun hearing him lecture on that. Uh, set your house. Number six is set your house in perfect order before you criticize the world. Number seven, pursue what is meaningful, not what is expedient. Number eight is tell the truth or at least don't lie. Yeah, that's a good one too. <laughs> that's, that's really good. <laughs> um, number nine is assume that the person you are listening to might know something that you don't. Number 10 is be precise in your speech. Number 11, do not bother children when they are skateboarding. And then number 12 is pet a cat when you encounter one in the street, which is essentially kind of like stop and smell the roses. Yeah, yeah. And I I love these little rules because they are a nice summary. And then you go through his book and it's each chapter is basically expounding upon each one of these rules. So if you're intrigued by any of those, totally check it out. Check out the audio book. Check out the regular book. And he narrates the audio book. It's really good. It's pretty good. And hey, we have that Audible affiliate. Check out our link if you want a free credit to listen to it for free. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. (laughs) Nice, nice plug serena will put it in the description um which i think is i think is uh audible forward slash the painter and the pixie audible trial.com audible trial. slash forward slash the painter and the pixie anyway it's i been know a, these things it's been a hot minute we're we're see we're not gonna like we're we're uh i just if people yeah, want to listen yeah, yeah, i want to give them a free option it's true that's true it's a good call um okay so the i, I had a lot of thoughts kind of leading up to this episode and we've done a lot of uh, nutrition episodes mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and which have been great um which people have really enjoyed we just did one on your service dog which was yeah. fun and uh you know i thought this one would be we're going to really focus on uh rule number two mm-hmm. uh which is treat someone uh treat yourself like you're uh, treat probably. yourself like you are someone who you're responsible for caring for right something okay. like that something like that we should <laughs> That's why I had it on my phone, man. I know, right? That's why I read it off. Treat yourself like someone you're responsible for helping, not just caring for, helping. Someone you're responsible for helping. So I wanted to put that into context into kind of our life and some of the thoughts that I've had moving into this season. So for for those living on the East Coast and particularly in the Northeast, we've had a pretty rough uh, winter, (laughs) um, which didn't stop until, I don't know, April. Yeah. And, uh, you know, May's been really rainy and, uh, yeah, it's the end of May and it's s- like, s- have we finally stepped into spring for real? Yeah. So if, <laughs> if anyone thought that a seasonal affective disorder was like not a real thing, I feel like everyone <laughs> has, has experienced it. Uh, this, it was just been a brutal winter. We had like a yeah. snowstorm every other Wednesday. Yeah, we did. Um, and so, it was like three Wednesdays in a row. Yeah, it was, it was, <gasps> it was bad. March. It was bad. Uh, so now the sun is out, the weather is warming and I mean, the sun's not out right now. It's it's kind of shitty out out, to be honest, (laughs) (laughs) but it's Um, consistently been out. (laughs) So I, I wanted to, you talked about intentionality Mm -hmm. and, uh, I really want this episode. My thought is to how to get the most out of your summer Mm. because I started thinking of, um, just bringing more intentionality behind a lot of the things that I'm doing. And I feel like, and you can feel free to disagree with me if you want, but I feel like, uh, summer is the weekend of seasons. Oh yeah. Hey, summer is my favorite. Yeah. By far. But that's just because I super love the heat and the sunshine. It's like you, I I was homeschooled for most of my schooling career. So it was not for me. It wasn't the same, um, anticipation of summer break. This is awesome. It's kind of like sometimes we did school all year round, you know, like it's, you don't really have a break. You just study when you study and then you stop studying when you stop studying. (laughs) But for you, you had this really big, and most people in our society have had this like anticipation. Summer's coming, summer's coming, just like the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I hated school. Um, and 
summer was more of like a reset mm. where, but we were working. Like I worked all right. summer from age 13 till uh, forever. Um, yeah. <laughs> till now. Till now. Till up to the present. <laughs> uh, so it wasn't a break from, it was just a break from being bored out of my mind in yeah. a classroom. Stuck now, there. I will say like I, school came very easily to me, mm-hmm. but that's why it was so boring. Um, but anyway. It makes sense. Uh, in the summertime, it, it was also, there was more energy around. And I think oh, that's, yeah. that's uh, you know, we've been talking a little bit about the global brain with Howard Bloom, yeah. who was on uh, Joe Rogan this, this past week. Fascinating stuff. I'm looking yeah. forward to reading that book. Um, but, so, hear me out. The okay. summer is the weekend of the seasons because most people look forward to the summer. It's where a lot of people are on vacation. Mm-hmm. Kids have camp. They go on vacation. They're out of school. If you're a teacher or a coach, you get a break. Mm-hmm. Um, so, a, and a lot of people are going on summer vacation somewhere. So it's a lot of kind of, I think there's also more socializing activities mm-hmm. available. Like there's more social opportunities that it's lighter out longer. It's warm. It's easier to do things. People mm-hmm. are working on their homes. I mean, it's our exterior season. So for me, I definitely yeah. don't get uh, that much of a break as far as our workload. If anything, it has more pressure right. <laughs> uh, on it, but that's just from like a painting perspective. Um, but what, what I find is that in the summer, if much like a weekend, you can either use it to screw off for the whole time uh, okay. and really enjoy yourself, <laughs> or you can set yourself up to have a really good week. Mm-hmm. Or you can do a little bit of both, which is right. really my recommendation. Yeah. <laughs> um, some, you know, some weekends are for work, some weekends are for leisure. Or, you know, you try and get one day where you're setting yourself up and then mm-hmm. another day where you're, you know, relaxing. Hanging out. Um, so I was thinking about our summer in particular and knowing that the, you know, uh, winter is coming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> has winter it, has been and, and winter w- will come w- again. Winter <laughs> is coming. So it's, we... You know, I want to set us up to be in the best possible position when we move into the fall, winter, yeah. and then back through the spring. Um, so for me, it's like any t- any part of a new venture, whether it's uh, having different fitness goals or setting up a new creative project or doing another podcast or anything like mm-hmm. that, it's setting up the framework is the thing that takes the most time. It takes the most time, the most energy, and the most intentionality is all on the front end. So if you're coming up with a new fitness plan, and like for me, like this season, I want to lean out. Like that's my overall, like I've been lifting a lot. My body feels, if anyone had listened to our Tim and Angie podcast a couple episodes ago. Yeah, getting in shape to get in shape. I actually feel like I am in shape to now push my body to get in better shape. And and to get really in the shape that I want to be in for jujitsu and just my overall kind of life goals. So... Uh, I find it easy to set that up. Now I, you know, talk to Timmy, develop Mm -hmm. a program and kind of, I know where my body's at and I've, some people might not have the same type of fitness goals that I have. Right. A lot of people don't, but that's okay. Pushing things as hard as I would like to. But for me, it's just like, once I have the framework in place, then I just hammer down and I do what I got to do. Well, you have your, your marching orders. Right. You just, the, the work for you is putting together your routine for lack of a better term. And then the easy part is just doing it. Right, right from your perspective, right. it's it's, like, it's harder to set up the the scenario, and you just do it once you get into it. Right, right, and then I find it's also good to then if you can set up your kind of your goals for if you have you know setting it up for the coming seasons as well before right. you get to those seasons. So right, so that you're not kind of flying by the seat of your pants. You've right. got what you said this a second ago, a degree of intentionality behind it to make sure that you've set yourself up for success. That's kind of like what I talked about in our um, travel tips yes. episode, right? Like yeah. with I, the biggest tip I give to people is plan ahead. Yeah. Look at the menus, look at the restaurants, make sure that you've got a plan of action so that when you get into the middle of it and you don't really feel like doing that work, you've done the work for yourself already. Right, right. right. That's what you're getting at, right? Yeah, well, so in my, my thought on this and just to bring it out to people that might have alternative goals to than what I'm pursuing. Mm-hmm. I just, I'm going to give a few examples from our life okay. and my life. Um, Sounds good. But it, the, the older I get, the more seasons I've had, the more I kind of get to know myself a little bit better. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if I'm treating myself like someone I'm responsible for helping, the better I know myself, the easier it is for me to help myself. Mm-hmm. And I think when you say, yeah. there is a, I have noticed that people will use that logic of, you know, 
self-esteem and treat yourself like someone you're responsible for helping is like you give in to all of your base desires and spoil yourself. Yeah. Sometimes that can be. I, I think that that's it the can be. treat yourself mentality, right. not treat yourself like you're responsible for someone you're helping. That's where I made that distinction in my vlog. Just treating yourself and saying, I deserve this is a totally different ball game. Yeah. Than treating yourself as if you're responsible for caring for yourself or helping yourself. Because if you're if you're legitimately trying to help yourself, you want to help yourself uh, ultimately achieve your goals. Right. So and put yourself in the best possible position to do that. So uh, for me, I know the based on the last couple seasons. Now I will say mentally, it's the best I've felt yeah. in quite a few years now. Coming out of uh, had a lot going on back surgery. We've had just a lot of shit going on and uh, just feeling feeling a lot better yeah. mentally and we have kind of uh we have you know getting used to being married and health yeah. issues and all these things we've been through mm -hmm. and uh you know that's probably another podcast dealing with my shenanigans yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not dying all of those not things. dying all those things um, yeah that, that, that I mean, it has an impact <laughs> right right we'll get we'll, yeah no, that's another podcast the the genesis of jeremy on, and serena yeah um so so now and now we're kind of thinking about a house and, mm -hmm. you know, kids in the next, you know, several years, but getting <laughs> in a position to be able to do that. Uh, so, but I know regardless and people on the East Coast or, or anywhere that experiences seasons, <laughs> like for me, I know it's going to be harder for my output's going to go down in the, in the winter and right. like fall, winter, the, the crappy seasons. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, for me, it's easier to maintain a framework than to build a new one in those right, seasons. Especially, yep. Yeah. So especially when you're, you're in the middle of it and you really feel crummy, right? It's right. much harder to get the, um, what's the word I'm looking momentum for? Going. Momentum going. Momentum. Thank you. It's yeah. exactly the word I was looking for. Gotcha. To get the momentum going that yeah. if you have something and maybe your momentum has slowed down a little bit, that's still easier to speed it back up than start from nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So I have um, some goals where we talked, we're going to go on vacation at the end of the summer. Uh -huh. We have a few little things here and there in the middle of the summer, but like our main, you and yeah. our collective vacation will be at the end. Yeah. So we, we kind of talked about what we'd want to get done so that when we go on that vacation, we feel like we kind of earned it and yeah. uh, are in a good spot. So um, for me, I wanted another place to put my brain right. when it's a little down and then I want to do another show. So like one of the things I'm going to do is build out a framework to do my own YouTube program, which is going to be, which yes. I've talked about before. Uh, it's called, it's going to be called the media diet, which mm -hmm. is, you know, as Serena says, you're intentional about what you put in your face for food yeah. and nutrition. <laughs> uh, then I don't I, say that. <laughs> I, I'm paraphrasing. Put in your paraphrasing. Face. It's fine. <laughs> Um, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'll be talking about how we engage in media and I'll be giving a lot of media guides on different platforms, awesome. about Netflix and all those things. But the point is I just want to build out, uh, I'm going to bring a higher level of production value to that mm -hmm. than some of the other things that I've done. So I'm building out that so that even if I wouldn't care if I didn't shoot one of those shows in the summer, I just want the framework in place right? so that when we move into the fall and stuff that I've, I can just start cranking those out, but I've got all of the nitty gritty details mm -hmm. done. Um, and, uh, it's kind of like for me the, using the summer weekend analogy is like prepping your food for the week. Yeah. Kind of a, a scenario. So yeah, you're helping yourself out to be successful in the future. You're helping future you in the present. Yeah. yeah. And so I want to touch on what you said a second ago about the Jordan Peterson's rule number two, treat yourself like someone you're responsible for helping. If anybody listening has ever had responsibilities for taking care of children or even taking care of animals, pets, yeah. to, it, that's like you have a different mentality towards that. I was thinking about this with Gus. Gus has just gotten over an ear infection. The breed... Poor little fellow. No, poor little guy. The breed is tends towards ear infections because he's super curly on the outside and he's got all those curls inside of his ears. Yeah, yeah. So it traps moisture and moisture then will lead to growing yeast so that's what he's he struggles with that i have to keep his, keep an eye on his ears yeah, yeah. but um I, I took him to the vet and they checked him out you know those the things that they say to do and whatever but you you help him you say okay you have an ear infection i have to make sure to clean your ears i know i have to use this ear wash to clean out any of that yeast that's growing i have to Make sure to dry your ears carefully after we bathe you so that you don't trap moisture in there. Like there's a 
list of things you do to prevent that your infection from occurring in the future because now you know you don't want to go back there and you're responsible for helping i'm responsible for helping gus yeah. so that he doesn't get to that point now what if you treated yourself with that same level i know i saw that too a little <laughs> ant crawling next to me um treated yourself with the same respect that I treat Gus, you know, I, he can't take care of his ears for himself. I have to help him with that. And just the same way I can, I can help myself to be successful in the future. I can do my meal prep for the week and make my smoothies bags. You know, you do your oh, smoothie dude, bags each it. week. Still digging it. And then that way you don't, you're not tempted to, you've got your food prepared, mostly prepared so that you're not tempted to say, well, screw it. I'm just going to go to McDonald's well, or whatever. Well, come on, let's not exaggeration hyperbole for effect for just just so you're not referencing something because people are going to think that i go to mcdonald's i haven't been to mcdonald's in like 20 years so okay, that's, just saying. that's true so um maybe sweet tooth sam went to mcdonald's <laughs> <laughs> anyway you you set yourself up for success and you treat yourself like you're responsible for someone you're caring for right yeah. you're responsible for helping i like the idea of that because you're saying and jordan said this during his talk you're saying my actions matter Right. What I do right. matters. It's not just like, eh, whatever, I make this choice and you're just floating along. Even if you are doing those things and just kind of like flitting along through life and you're randomly making decisions just because they are presented to you. Yeah, that could work. But are you really setting yourself up for success? All of the decisions that we make on a day to day basis matter and they will either help us be neutral or hinder us. And honestly, I feel like if we're neutral, we're not really helping us. So that can still be a hindrance. Right. 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 Well, and if you, the, when you build a framework, and I've talked about this before, building a framework to flourish, mm -hmm. uh, the better you know yourself, the more you know what type of environment, what type of framework you're actually going to be able to execute on and then do well with. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you build a framework, all you're doing, and when you prep food for the week or, or make an exercise plan, all you're doing is pre-making decisions for yeah. yourself. You're pre-making good decisions for yourself yep. when you know you're not going to be at your optimum decision-making capacity. Mm -hmm. Once, once the week starts and we've got work and we've got, you know, working out and all of these things, it's, it's your, you're going to be in the middle of the grind. If you can just, you've already given yourself like for me, like a target rich environment right. with healthy food options. Right. Then I'm like, I'm good. I've got my smoothie. I've pre-made my, loaded baked potatoes or like whatever it is that I've done for the week um, where you on a broader realm of things like if you've like we do this podcast we mm -hmm. put it out every week that's a framework right for us and you know I'm working on building out it a little bit tighter with like all right what are the Instagram posts going to look mm -hmm. like and if you just almost any plan is better than no plan yeah that is true that's so. really true that is, uh, yeah, when we were talking to Tim and Angie, the get in shape to get in shape episode, Angie said that, you know, just be consistent. If you're going to work out three times a week, get there three times a week. And it's okay if you stop after 20 minutes instead of going for two hours, right. because you're still, it's still any plans better than no plan. You're still yeah. having some level of consistency for yourself. Yeah. And I would say, you know, some people think that people that work out a lot really, really enjoy working yeah. out. This is a great point. And, or training jujitsu and coming from someone that has a high work capacity and I've trained a lot for a long, a lot of years. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, a lot of times I yeah. don't enjoy it. <laughs> I don't enjoy it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's work. It's a grind, man, particularly like contracting all day. And then, yeah, I'd, I'd much rather have a couple extra beers and yeah. not do that <laughs> almost every time. Yeah. But I know I've got, you know, you just, I've already, but there's, there, I have broader goals. I want to get my purple yes. belt. I want to, um, you know, do the, I want my body to work correctly. Like that's, so when I get in there and grind, it's not cause I'm like enjoying every second of it. Yeah. That's not, a, there's parts that I enjoy more than others. Mm -hmm. There's some parts that are really, cause obviously if you didn't enjoy it at all, you wouldn't like, really do it or probably you at least have to enjoy the results, mm -hmm you know, more than the grind and the, the pain and suffering you put yourself yeah. through to, uh, well, you said having goals. broader goals. Yeah. That's huge. That's that. You said this a second ago, you have to know yourself yeah. really well. And that's how, you know, 
you've spent so much time developing who you are and what your goals are that you can put together a framework and take the guessing out of it for you. Set yourself up for success in that way. So I think that's really important too for anybody listening who kind of says, well, Jeremy's so extreme. I get those. <laughs> like, he does all this stuff. He, he drinks so many smoothies. He's so, he's amazing. I he's just don't so think I'm an, I'm not extreme at all because I know people that are way bigger freaks than me. That's true. But a so. lot of people who start from nothing, it seems so completely insurmountable to get there that starting with any level of consistency what's a goal that you have is if your goal is to lose five pounds okay what steps do we need to take to get there you yeah. can chunk it down this is yeah. is another one um jordan peterson was talking about this too right chunking things into smaller pieces yes yeah. doable pieces for yourself that and i'm a huge fan of that that's why that's why i have half of my clients in my office why they see me over another practitioners because i'm about slow steady progress over time right. not change your whole world right now that's impossible very very few individuals on the face of the planet probably ever in history could do that change yeah. everything completely drastically and like thrive yeah. Setting up yeah. a framework for success is super important. Developing goals that you want and you can start small. Five pounds is a great goal. You know what? You, does, one pound, like something, anything that's going to help move you in a forward direction is great. Yeah. Yeah. And then also trusting. Here's a big one that I've noticed with myself. So is trusting the plan when I'm in the middle uh. of executing. And, That's good too. And sometimes I feel like I have a tendency and I would imagine others do as well. I just don't want to put this particular thought on anybody, but um, you, you set up a goal and then you start a plan and then you get, you know, a little bit into the plan. You're like, well, screw this. I'm just going to bail yeah, and be hard. like, no, like trust the plan, trust that yeah. you have thought this out. And obviously if there's some cataclysmic, right. you're not getting the results you want, you want to adjust. But, um, you that's know, where chunking helps. And that's where, so I'll just use foos, food prep as an example. I thought you were going to say foosball. <laughs> foosball, yeah, I don't play foosball. Um, but so, so for food prep, I do, you know, at this point, I'm sure people have heard about like my smoothies that I do all the time. Yeah. I love prepping out now those, those bags. Yeah. I don't actually like doing the prep, but I love having those bags loaded up in the mm -hmm. freezer and in the refrigerator because that's like five, six smoothies that yeah. dude, it's crazy fast now to make them. Yeah. So and what you do then is you take all the ingredients for the week and just portion them out, pre-portioned into Ziploc bags for right. those who may not be right. familiar. So with I've got the process. leafy greens and the carrot in the in the refrigerator <clears throat> in those big Ziploc bags, and then I've got the frozen stuff, the fruit in the smaller bags in mm -hmm. the freezer, and then I have all the only thing I have to do is chop up the tomato and the avocado mm -hmm. and a little scoop of protein, and then we're we're uh, we're rocking. Mm -hmm. So. And then the uh, coconut milk anyway. Um, yeah, but, but it, just, it takes a lot of that prep work. It's almost like you, you don't, it's half the work. It's half the time. Yeah, because I make my smoothies in the morning before work. I'm not a morning person. Yeah. The easier I can make that exit, the smoother things go, the better my day is. And then those, you know, paying attention to the little things really, really matters. Yeah. So if you can, if you can yeah. smooth out those little details in your week... You know, and then, it, you know, if you don't like your job or anything like that, if you can smooth out everything around that, right. at least that's going well. The things you can control, you are controlling. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm pre-making those decisions because I've pre-made my food and it's mm -hmm. just easy to grab it and, uh, and do it up. And then what I've noticed with that, the dietary framework is unless I've had an aha, wonderful idea of something else that I'm going to make ahead of time, I just keep making the same thing that I know works. Yep. Sometimes that gets boring, but life gives you enough variety and we have family dinner and other stuff. So like, you, you know, for me, you don't need to constantly like change things around. Yeah. I can ride something out that's the same for a while because I'm pursuing all these other things. And if your life is getting complex, the way to handle that for me is having these frameworks where my brain just slots into it yeah. and I'm just, ex I'm just executing. Like, it's just like to an extent it becomes as automated as like chopping wood right? or, or something, you know, that's really easy. So yeah, where you're, you're not, it's not that you're not thinking about it. You've just done it so much that it's like going to jujitsu is just, you know, it's just you're on autopilot. Uh, yeah. You're on autopilot for a lot of it. And then you can bring, you know, mental energy into it, uh, where you need to. Right. So, yeah, and that to me sounds very much like developing a habit because that's what a habit is. You don't have yeah. to think about doing these things very often or a skill even if you want to call it that because prepping your food out is a habit but it's also a skill to know how much of your greens you put into each of the, your smoothie bags and all of that. Um, but you're also... 
I know you said, what did you say? You said something a second ago. Oh, variety. A lot of people want more variety than what you've got going on. But I want to say like, okay, so you have the same quote unquote, the same smoothie every day or most of the time, but you have snacks and things, you know, it's not like you only eat the same food all the time. Yeah. Because a lot yeah. of people kind of, when I'm working with clients, they don't like that. They're always like, oh gosh, I could never do the same smoothie all the time. <laughs> yeah. But I, but then I encourage people and I say, okay, well keep the base the same and change the fruit. Do pineapple one day, oh, do yeah. watermelon yeah. the next day, do whatever it is you want to do. <laughs> um, and, you can give yourself some variety while keeping the base level the same. Yeah. Well, and I've always, and my brother and I have always kind of felt similarly in this is that I don't really, when my week is in full swing, mm-hmm. I don't really care. I just want to get the the best nutrition in me mm-hmm. and have, you know, good enough stuff so that I can get to all my training. I feel good. And mm-hmm. that way, you know, we go to Saturday, uh, we're going to do some like, you know, scratch me cheat meals. That's where I'm going to get that satisfaction of like, you know, satisfying all my taste buds and that kind right. of stuff. Right. Where you and, and I like that a little bit better too, because that's where you can sit down and really enjoy right. that food. Right. When you're just sitting down on the floor between jobs, painting, you're not like in the mood to really enjoy <laughs> that meal. You know, you don't, it doesn't have to be a five right. star meal right. when you're just in between working. It, it is, is definitely more like fuel yeah. to, to keep on smashing. So, and like I said, you can give yourself a lot of variety if you wanted to, and that's to encourage anybody else listening. You do not have to eat the same thing every day. I'm all about nutrient variety. You want a wide variety of nutrients. And I will say, the wide variety of nutrients needs to come in a year. It doesn't have to be like every day. Some people get really into like you need to eat different things every day all the time. Yeah. Not really. I mean, if you're working on like these smoothies right now, you've been doing them for a little while, but then, okay, we'll change them up and give a different blend of greens, a different type of fruit, a different type of protein powder or what have you. Like, right, right. You, you still can get variety while keeping the same concepts the same or similar concepts the same. Yep, yep. So, yeah, I just... Uh, <clears throat> And I also think for um, just being intentional with the summer, Mm -hmm. one of the things you and I aren't the best at is like planning fun kind of date type things to do. So I was thinking about that. Like we should definitely get, like we should plan out some, my grandfather was really big on having things to look forward to. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, and I I think that's important uh, also and not just, it's easy to kind of get into the grind of Mm -hmm. things and, uh, and not you know, stop for a second and be like, Hey, are we enjoying what we're doing yeah. right now? Yeah. Um, so we've, we've had some, some thoughts on that too. Like we're going to probably work on some more epic cheat meals together mm-hmm. as far as, uh, and then we've got our bread thing we got to do. And yeah, just, that's going to be a super fun Cause what, one what you and I have too. a lot of fun with is just basically having a few drinks and then cooking something awesome. Yeah. That's like the best. That's, that's is really fun. Yeah. We really do enjoy that. Now yeah. when we were dating, we did, for those of you who are listening, who may not know, and I don't know if we've ever talked about this on a show before, but when we were dating, we had a challenge for ourselves cooking through different types of cuisine. So each week we would pick something new, like Italian or Thai food or whatever it was. And we went through a bunch of different, that was super fun. We should just do that again. Yeah. Yeah. But I have some other, I think with those challenges, because you know, I've, I've made fun of you for this before. (laughs) Um, and then you, you're starting to see me in action more and more is that, uh, we like, I make some ridiculous potato skins. You do. And it's actually something that I uh, will make for myself for the week because it's actually a nice little way to uh, get some awesome nutrients in. It's like pre-making a loaded baked potato. Yeah, so. yeah, and that's one thing that I had suggested to both you and Josh because you're both pretty f- fairly, more than most people, athletic, training quite frequently, you know, at least five days a week, both of you, most of the time. Yep. Um, so you need more carbs than a, a lot of other people and some variety. So that's where I suggested if you guys are tight, like Josh's lunch was not a good lunch. It was just <laughs> like bird food. You're like, oh, you poor <laughs> I thing. I call it gerbil you food. Have, you have so much more variety that you can be eating. And yeah, yeah. then I was like, try a loaded baked potato. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You can do that. It's great. Yeah. So I gave him so, one of my potatoes. He's like, I can have this. I'm like, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Potatoes. And eat real food. That's what right. I always come back to. Right. And like a potato. Potato is a real food, cheese that you put on it, bacon that you put on it, sour cream, all those things. That's real food because we get real sour cream and real cheese and yep. not and stuff that's made and in the lab. Onions and green onions and all that yeah, good stuff. Yeah, tons so, of good stuff. Um, but uh, 
man, I don't know. Oh, 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 here's where I was going with that. Sorry. <laughs> like I've, I make, I have like some Jeremy signature dishes. Yeah, seriously. Those and, uh, potato skins are one of them. Yeah, my potato skins I have completely dialed in. And for those curious, I also have uh, some coconut breaded chicken fingers mm. that are fried in beef tallow, which are insane. Mm. Uh, onion rings, French fries, all fried in beef tallow. Mm-hmm. And uh, pancakes, waffles, those types of things. Yeah. That I have dialed in that are like people want that and they know I make it. Yeah. Uh, and then one of the things I was like, yeah, well you should, you know, you want to develop some stuff that's, I think the only thing you are known for food wise is your taco salad that I, I can, I, yeah, I, well, that I would say. And the thing is you make a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. but you never make it taste the same more than once. No, that's not true. Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes, Sometimes. I just, you know, tweak it. If I don't have the correct spices or whatever, I yeah. just make it up. But I do have my taco salad, my crock pot curry. That's true. That's another one. Um, I guess you have some stews. A lot of my stews. Yeah. I also have my treats that are, you don't eat them as much, but a lot of my clients really enjoy them. My ABCs, you had one earlier today, my almond butter cups. Ooh, those are good. Which I just did a video, a how-to video, five minutes, super easy. You can check that out too. Um, And butter mints and some of those other things that are like other helpful food tips. You know, those are... Those butter mints, man. I haven't had those in a hot minute. A long time. Those yeah, that's good. not my recipe. But yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll link that. You guys that's true. You do have too. some... Uh, I do have some good ones. They're just not ones that you typically eat. Yeah. Well, they're more... Yeah. And in, in the... Uh, what's the... Not that's rice pudding. That's... Uh, oh, chia seed pudding. Chia seed pudding yep, good. I have a chia seed pudding. Um, but I think like... We've talked about kind of putting together a cookbook type yeah, of thing oh in the gosh, future. That'd be awesome. But I was like, we should work on more like signature dishes, mm. like things that we can crank out. Like our pad thai is legit. Our pad, our thai, pad thai is, thai is super good. Super good. Um, I make some slam and egg rolls too. Ooh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm remembered that before. The uh, yeah, your egg rolls yeah. are bananas. Super good. They're so good. Yeah. So I do make some good stuff. Yeah, we, we just haven't <laughs> had some of them in a while. But yeah. I'm like, but that's I how. I get the hint. I get the hint. Just sometimes you don't have the. Uh, the mentality behind like cultivating a uh, like a recipe that you've just got like dialed in mm. that's how i that's how I, i'm not saying it's right or wrong or whatever but like when i go and say like okay i'm gonna make this thing yeah i make it a bunch of times until i have it to like where i want it and it's within the parameters and i know how to like replicate it every yeah. time and that way like it's the framework's already there yeah. and i'm just executing on it and that's what's really nice about what i've noticed is doing this food prep because mm-hmm. uh, you commented on it like last week or the week before of like, man, you do, a, this is like a lot of work. And I'm like, I don't even see it like that because yeah. I'm not having to think about it at all. I've done it so many times that it's just like going through the motions yeah. and uh, you can always have a few drinks while you're doing it. Right. So. <laughs> that does make the time go faster, yeah. I will say. It's true. It's sweet. So what I'm hearing, the theme here that I'm hearing is uh, actually like, it's, it's almost like getting in shape to get in shape, right? You're setting yourself up for success, but all of this is self-care. Right. All of right. this is self-care. I, I think you said something a while ago. I want to check, come back around to what you said. The treat yourself mentality is really big right now. It's just like you deserve this or you've been good all week. You can have that, which I, I, I do like rewards, but I get a little bit, eh, it feels so good when <laughs> people start putting rewards um, with just food and treats as if you were deprived the rest of the time. Right. You're not. You're eating really good, wonderful enriching nutrient dense foods that taste amazing you don't deserve something shitty just because you were good all week right, that's right. i don't like that mentality no you want to indulge and you want to enjoy that's great that's self-care right if you're setting yourself up for success in the future you're saying i'm going to prep out these smoothie bags and make my potato skins and do all the things that i need to do in order to have success through the week that's that's caring for yourself. That's treating yourself as if you're someone you're responsible for helping yeah. rather than I'm going to do what I think feels good in the moment just because I need a break. Like there is a time and a place for that. You do need to reward yourself. You do need to feel like you're not totally restricted and deprived through the whole time. I absolutely agree with you. But when that becomes the focus, focus only on the treat food, that's what I'm like, mm, okay, so if that's what you're living for, we've got to fix the rest of your food, the rest of your week. You need to enjoy right. that too. Right, right. Well, and that's what... Um there's a a phrase called like uh what is it called um low you have like a low barrier for reward oh and what it is is like you um (laughs) 
like any small thing, you're like, oh yeah, I deserve this. I That's, had a salad with one lunch today, but um, I deserve eating five cookies and three yeah. beers after well, dinner. Well, and obviously you, you take it to the nutrition place because that's, True. I would say, culturally one of the most common ways people quote unquote reward themselves. Yeah. But I will say that gets ingrained from you with like grade school. Child. You get a you young, get an answer child. right, you get a piece of candy. Yep. Like, that's it's just encouraging uh, smart kids to become chubby. That's uh, yeah. which I can speak to from experience. Yeah, true. Um, I got all the answers correct. That was also accompanied quite often with baby Snickers. So yeah, right. And see, <laughs> that's like there's nothing wrong with having that reward. But when that's your only focus is I deserve this treat. Yeah. That's where it gets a little bit sticky for me. You want to enjoy the recipe. You love eating your potato skin things, your loaded baked potatoes for lunch. Delicious. Yeah. Super yeah. yummy. You do not feel deprived when you eat that. And it's nutrient dense and fulfilling, right? It's great food. If you feel deprived, then something is a little bit wrong here. That's, that's another one of my nutrition philosophies. You should not feel like you're starving yourself to be healthy. That's just a complete myth. Right, right. And we talked about even like me wanting to lean out. I'll do a little bit of caloric restriction, but anyway, you don't need to get to the nitty gritty of that. Yeah. No, interesting. That would be, but, um, my, the main point that I, I'm kind of coming back to as far as taking care of yourself. Yeah. Uh, as if you were someone responsible for, for helping is that, you know, through some introspection and also trial and error, look back on like, mm-hmm. these are goals that I made in the past. This is, these are the things that I have, you know, succeeded on. Even if it's something small, you can kind of scale that, but also, you know, when kind of where your failure points might yeah. be and you should, you know, take a good look at like, okay, if I was, Almost as if you were creating a framework for someone else. Right, yeah. But that someone else is actually you. And then you, if, if the more of an observer role you can take and be a little bit objective with looking at your strengths and weaknesses and being like, okay, I want to achieve this thing. What's the best way for me to do that? Yep. And I think also, you know, we have a tendency to look at other people's successes. And the mistake that I have made before is try and achieve a goal the way somebody else mm. would, who's not at all similar to how... Right. It, totally different context. Just a, a different context or, you know, for, for the physical stuff, a different type of athlete or a different time scale or, mm-hmm. or whatever. So, um, and it's all got to be in the context of your life too. Mm-hmm. So if you're you know, if you if you have kids or you have all these other things going on, you know, be mindful of that as you are setting up these frameworks. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, the uh, the way that I succeed and move forward is really by you can't get away from consistent effort over time. Right. That's, that's all it is. That's, that's what any of this is. That's for everybody. Yeah, for everything. For everything. And if you want to get good at jujitsu, you got to show up and train. Mm-hmm. That's it. And keep doing that. Yep. For a long time. Yep. And it's the same with fitness. And there's a there's a shut up and grind aspect to all uh, of these things that are not flashy. Yeah. And it's it can get boring. But that's why, you know, for me, I like to have a bunch of different frameworks going in mm-hmm. different avenues and always kind of be working on another one. So, yeah. I mean, even this summer, my brother and I, I'll be uh, doing another podcast uh, for so with fun. my brother, um, the Clever Contractor. Um, so we will be, uh, kind of working on that and, uh, have, that's a whole other big framework, Mm -hmm. which again, we are working super hard on it this summer. Um, and then the, and that's just to build the framework and the real work will begin probably in the fall. So, and that's another thing that we're doing that's going to be up and up and going before we go on vacation. So. So Um, let me, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. So thinking about all these things, I really love the idea of setting up a framework. I love the idea of setting yourself up for success. I love the idea what you talked about. You have to know yourself well enough to kind of know where your weaknesses are so that you can buffer against those weaknesses. For example, we know that wintertime, neither one of us are really necessarily at our best from a mental perspective. You're like, okay, this really sucks. It's dreary and gross and cold all the time. Where's my 90 degree weather? (laughs) I love that. (laughs) So knowing those things and setting yourself up for success is fantastic. But it's one thing to make a framework. You've talked a lot about how setting up the framework is really the key component for you, but what do you do when you get to it and you don't want to follow through? Like that's, <laughs> I mean, a lot of people, cause I talk to a lot of my clients about this. They always say to me, they feel as though the quote, they don't have willpower to do the things. And I don't necessarily think it's that it doesn't have as much to do with willpower as it does 
just following through, which kind of sounds like willpower. So my question is, what are your thoughts on that? What would you say to someone who says, okay, I set up this great framework, like I'm guilty of this, me and my friend Megan, yay, hi Megan, (laughs) (laughs) Um, had a goal back in November, from November to December, to do a certain number of push-ups together, right? Push-ups and squats, we had our challenge, we went from zero to 250 in the month and did a great job. It was awesome. But what do you do when you get to that time? We set up that framework. Framework was great. We had our weekly check-ins and it was so much fun, but I got sick in the middle of November or something happened on the, when I got back from one of my trips and for three days, I couldn't do anything. Couldn't do any pushups. So like, what do you do? Throw in the towel? No. But how do you, how do you personally And what are your thoughts about like kind of getting back on the horse, right? How do you stick to your framework once you've created it? Because I know a lot of people listening, creating the framework is probably the easy part for them, right? (laughs) A lot of people can go and find programs and do things, but how do you maintain it? That's more challenging, I think, sometimes. In my experience, and again, I'm not an expert, uh, it's creating a framework that's a shitty framework is really easy. So creating Mm -hmm. a framework that you're going to fail in, super easy. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I could come up with the most optimum training schedule mm-hmm. where I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to get up at five in the morning and run. And then I'm going to go do, I'm going to do my, uh, let's see, I'm going to do yoga every day. If I have to get up at five thirty or four forty-five in the morning to go, I'm going to do it. And then that way I'll do two a day. So I'll do yoga in the morning. I'm going to run. And then I'm going to go do jujitsu. Like, yeah, that that's a great framework to move all of those skills ahead. Yeah. Uh, and that's a legitimate thing I tried. Yeah, so, it's true. Um, and it was, it was too much. So mm-hmm. with the frameworks, you may fail a couple times at, at setting one up that you thrive in. Mm. And I think okay. the more experience that I've gotten with them, the better I am at gauging like, okay, how am I gonna, will I pull this off? Will I, uh, perfect example is when I did Jeremy Unsolicited, my first mm-hmm. podcast. I had no framework for that show. Mm. Uh, aside from the production, like actually right. recording. Producing the show. Producing the show, like recording. I had my intro, outro, and all of that stuff. Um, but, you know, I I was recording like a fiend. Sometimes I recorded like four or five shows in a week, and I would release them all at once. And then the next week, I wouldn't have any shows, and I'd have to scramble to get more guests on. And uh, it was not a sustainable structure that I could maintain. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that, that to me is like, that's why I landed on like a show a week, at least if you're, yeah. if you're not a full-time podcaster is a sustainable thing to do. And that's what we, you know, when I launched this show with mm-hmm. you that I, we, I kind of already had the framework laid out. I'm like, mm-hmm. here's what we do. And we're still dialing in a few things, but, um, we're able to like batch record. It's very mm-hmm. sustainable. We're not burnt out. Right. We're still enjoying talking to each other. So all the important things of a framework sustainability is as I matured the biggest thing for me that I have started to focus on um, because I used to just go balls out at everything yeah. and like run through walls <laughs> and Jeremy uh, Smash. I still I still really enjoy throttling up but it's a little bit more measured and I know where my lanes are mm-hmm. to to accelerate so I would say if you're <clears throat> you <laughs> at least for me fitness is an easy one. When you think about a framework, it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to be huge. I'm going to be jacked or uh, for our female listeners, like svelte, whatever yeah. body type you were going for. <laughs> I don't know I'm if not... I've ever heard a female say, I want to be svelte. <laughs> uh, well, like lean, I don't know, yeah. attractive, whatever. Yeah. Everyone just wants to look good with their shirt off. That's yeah. really what it is. Um, <laughs> but uh, so it's like, it's easy to envision that. But if you haven't experienced what the grind is, give yourself some grace and have a nice on ramp, like make it easier. So you, going back to chunking again, you want like an <laughs> exponential, um, uh, kind of curve where okay. like things start to layer. And also, if you can just give yourself a few little milestones where you are like, mm. I accomplished this, it starts to give you some momentum. And the more you do something, the easier it is to do. Mm-hmm. So like hypothetically, if you were trying to start, like I want to go to yoga. Just mm-hmm. go, just start, go once, a, go, go once a week. Yeah. And then, okay, I got used to going once a week. No, add twice a week. And mm-hmm. then, but have a cap. Say like, I just want to get to the point where I want to go three times a week. That's a great, any physical practice that you're doing in jujitsu, we always say like three times a week, you're moving forward. Two times a week is maintenance. You know, four times a week, you're crushing it. So, yeah. but three times a week is super sustainable for any kind of physical practice here. Once you're used to doing something Once like you're used that. to do it, but you, you kind of work up to that. 
Um, but then like, you know, when we were going to yoga all the time, like it's super easy to jump in the car and go to yoga because yeah. you're just so used to doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but it takes some time to like work up to that. So, uh, and when your <laughs> when your framework fails, just pay attention to like what, what about it yeah. failed. And then also working yeah, that's in, a good point. I've also learned to give myself some, uh, some breaks. Yeah. Let me jump in here real quick Sorry, before go you go. Wait, looking at what failed about it is super important. I think that's a great, well, let's hang here for a second because a lot of us go into, I'm a failure. I can't believe I didn't do this right. I didn't get there. I, what is wrong with me? I can't get my ass to yoga. Like whatever it is. No, let's look at that and say, okay, let's look at the sustainability. Let's break this apart. And what you said a minute ago, get into the observer role to say, okay, maybe three times a week, is too much for me right now. So scale back to two or go back to one right, and give right. yourself another on-ramp. And I think that is great. That mentality is better because you're saying, what about this structure didn't work for me? Not why did I fail in this structure? Because you take a, it. Yes, you have a, a role in that, but you're what, when you change the perspective to say, what about this didn't work for me? Now you're in problem solving mode. You're not yeah. in um, defeat. I'm defeated mode. Yeah. Which I think is super helpful because people, a lot of times you get started, a lot of people get started and they want the summer body or whatever, or, or new year's resolutions. It's a perfect example. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And they rush forward and they have this crazy, insane, tense, insane plan. And they're never going to ever be able to accomplish that because it's so big and so huge. So chunking it into smaller pieces, I'm, I'm extrapolating from what you've just said, which makes a lot more sense to me. You're at the level you're at because you've had many, many, many structures, many, many on ramps to get you where you are. But when you're starting out, just doing something that's feasible, reasonable, fits into your lifestyle, your likes, your dislikes. Yes, sometimes you're not going to want to do it and it's going to be a grind. But you know, hey, if I get there this one time a week, I really don't feel like going to yoga, but I'm going to go because I know that it's going to be easier next week. It's not like for me, I tend to go really hardcore. I'm like, I go for 45 days in a row and then I stop for two weeks. It's like, yeah. no, it's, it's easier to, it's more sustainable long-term to develop those goals you have long-term to take it one step at a time. I've got that down pat. No problem with it comes to food, <laughs> but like not at all with my physical practice. Yeah. I'm like, whoo, whoo, whoo. Well, I'm over I, the place. <laughs> I wanted to touch on something else, which I meant to mention earlier. Um, so I'm the type of person where con- context is one of my strengths. Yeah. I really need to see everything in my life in the context of my world mm-hmm. and why it is it's important to me. What's the purpose behind mm-hmm. it? And I have the reason that I am somewhat decent at forming frameworks and executing on them now is I've failed a shit ton of times right. at in a ver- pick pick something. I've failed at it. Yeah. Like and failure's not bad. You learn from it. Um, provided it's not life alteringly right. horrible or right. whatever. And even those, those are ones you learn from. Like, you know, some of the injuries I've gotten have been yeah. really illuminating and uh, <laughs> it, it's, uh, and some of them have just sucked. So, but like, and not even physically, but I've failed at all kind of like biz- Josh and I love yeah. talking about our, like we had a vending company. It was horrible. We lost so much <laughs> money. Like I've, I was a used car salesman for like a hot I minute. I that. ate shit on that horribly. Like, I've done all kinds of stuff yeah. and they haven't worked out. Yeah. But you um, keep building frameworks and saying, how am I going to succeed? And then what next can I try so I can succeed? Well, it, it's not just that it's, I, I see this all the time with other, and I've done this myself with like, I want to be yoked. I want to be like, you know, six pack abs, all these things, but it's not in in the context of what? Yeah. Uh, like why, why do you need, I'm, I have a context like, and what I have said to you too is like, you've got to contextualize your fitness. Why do you want right. to be fit? What do you want your body to do? What are you when, asking when you to you, do with those? Results? When you say, I, I want to be fit, yeah. f- fit to do what? For me, like, I'm trying to bulletproof my body for jujitsu because mm-hmm. it's rough. When I did yoga, that was for jujitsu, not right. for yoga. Right. Um, so I'm really big on contextualizing your goals and your frameworks in the broader scope of, you know, kind of engineering the lifestyle mm-hmm. that you want. You know, even if that if that lifestyle is, you know, f- if your goal is far off, like, okay, well, then what do you have to do to work up? I have some yeah. really long-term goals that are, you know, lend itself more towards like visionary stuff. We've been talking yeah. about the house that we want to do together. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas like, you know, I want to set it up so the bulk of the construction and everything is going on during the summer. 
Mm -hmm. so that that I know I'm going to be over there having to do some GC stuff and making sure things are going the way that we want them to go, Mm -hmm. but there's just more time to do it. But like even having those kind of, uh, you want to, I like contextualize. Some people can just, my brother's like this. He can just pick a goal that's seemingly arbitrary and just be like, and like do all the things. And then he kind of decides if he wants to keep it or not. Mm -hmm. Um, Whereas like if I don't have a broader, a reason, a, a purpose that reason it fits and purpose. into the rest of your life. Yeah, you, you know, even like with this show, we've talked about like what do we want to do with it? Like mm-hmm. with the 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 contracting thing, the clever contractor, we're going to be equipping uh, young. It will be very likely young tradesmen, young contractors, mm-hmm. with the skills to build out the business side, helping them right. succeed with the business of contracting. Mm-hmm. Whether you're you know an electrician, a plumber, a carpenter, a painter, whatever. Yeah. And we're empowering more people to do so. That's like a that's a really kind of big goal. Now, how do we accomplish that? That's where the frameworks mm-hmm. come into place and all of that. Right. And and you're helping them to build their own frameworks to succeed too. So right. Right. I think that's really useful answering the question that I asked about like what do you do when you get into it and you're like I don't feel like I can handle this. So you you can scale back, right? You don't have to stick with your original plan. Is what I'm hearing you say. Yeah. You can adjust if you need to adjust. You can take the time to. If you have failed with your original context, quote unquote failed, um, you can move to a different context. You can move to a different framework, not context, to succeed in that. So like you said, maybe getting up at 4.45 in the morning and going to yoga three days a week was really not going to be the most sustainable or successful it's for you. You did it for a while. And a lot of things we can just push through, grind, you know, yeah. just white knuckle and get through it. Well, those are the short term things. And those are some of the, some of the short term things. white knuckling. Eventually you got to let go. To. <laughs> right. But you, if you can make it easier on yourself, do that. If you are exercising three days a week for 10 minutes, and whereas your whole rest of your life prior to that, you've done nothing, that is a massive, huge success. You start there. Even if you start with one day a week, you know, you just can increase and build upon the framework. It doesn't have to be static. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would say like, I, I was kind of mulling over this idea earlier is like not letting myself get bored Mm. and then having sexier goals. I think Mm. as a, as a society, we need way sexier goals. Yeah. Something fun, like bigger, more fun doing something fun. Like if you're going to do something fitness, like, all right, you know, I, I competed in an ultra marathon that still bugs the shit out of me that I got a DNF and didn't finish it. I want to, I want to finish. I want to do an ultra marathon. I want to do that one and I want to do well in it. So like, that's something that I know my brain's not going to let go yeah, of, yeah. but I'm going to need more of a Have lead fun, up. I won't be joining you there. I know I'm going to need more of a lead up than I did last time yeah. to do it and do it well and make sure my body's where I want it to be to do that. Right. So that's like a, because it's just like a f- interesting thing, like a podcast that yeah. we're doing. This is like a kind of a fun thing that can scale mm-hmm. and, and looking at things that scale also s- setting it up so that even if you lose, you win. Oh yeah, that's a good and point th- too. Those are things t- we'll we'll stay on this topic here of our show, uh, which I think we've talked about before. Mm-hmm. But even my, the first show that I did, I knew that I was going to get production reps mm-hmm. of how to put out a podcast, and I used all those skills to make this show. So right. So even if it doesn't succeed in the way that you imagine it would succeed or hope for it to succeed, you still come out on top because you've learned skills, you've developed right. talents, you've 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 earned something from the hard work you've put into it, even if it wasn't exactly what you were hoping to in the first place. Yeah. And I think people have a fear of wasting time mm. and that can be a preventative thing that, that we will do to not engage in a certain goal or mm-hmm. try and pursue it. Cause you're like, Oh, I'm going to waste so much time. Probably. Yeah. But, but you can redeem some of that by framing your goal in a way that you, you went like, I didn't turn into Joe Rogan overnight. Right. I don't have the most <laughs> successful podcast on the planet, but it's a step in that direction. Yeah. Truly. So. Right. This goes back to, again, I know I've said this a bunch of times, chunking. You need to break things down into small enough pieces so that you can digest, assimilate, and utilize those nutrients, yeah. right, those skills <laughs> to build what you're trying to build. Yeah. So I guess that's what I'm thinking that a lot of what I hear you say, I, I love, this is a fun conversation, <laughs> um, but I love the idea of building upon something and using the skills you've got to build another skill, right? You're still winning, even if you're wasting, quote unquote, wasting time. At least you've got, you know, hey, I'm not good at that. Yeah. Or, or I don't like that. Yeah. You know, try some stuff out. See what you do like. Develop those habits and strategies. It's yeah. great. And I think for people that are, you know, looking to, you know, because of who 
it, it makes up some of our audience. A lot of people are into like nutrition and mm-hmm. kind of, I would assume fitness and wellness yeah. goals and those yep. types of things. Um, speaking to something slightly outside of that, because like eventually you'll figure it out and you mm-hmm. just, you want to, you'll find a way to be, uh, you know, eating well. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that's having the right information, which is yeah. where you come in and you have a great guide and all of those kinds of things. Another thing too, th- I just want to put a, put a pin in this sure. and talk about like for you, f- f- for fitness, mm-hmm. I've always said you really need to contextualize your fitness. Like yeah. why, you know, y- you toy with the idea of competing in yoga or, mm-hmm. or whatever, but you've got to find something that you enjoy and, or if you're like, look, I'm not that into fitness. I want to do like the bare minimum that's yeah. going to keep my body in shape doing the things that I wanted. Cause you, I think that's the mistake some people can make is that you, true. you think you need to spend so much time mm-hmm. on it. You don't, you don't need to, you don't need to do what I do. You don't need yeah. to do what a lot of other folks, if you enjoy it, then yeah. But, yeah. um, f- like for you, you can do like, what's the bare minimum that I can do. What's the minimum effective dose? Yeah. Um, or if you had some crazy, Jeremy, I want to do this race or whatever. It's yeah. like, okay, well then that contextualize your fitness like that. Right. As soon as you say like, I'm going to train for an ultra marathon. Okay. Well, that contextualizes your training. You got some work to do. Yeah. And it's a really, that, and that's probably about the most boring training you can do. Cause yeah. it's just like lots of miles and lots of hills and all of that stuff. But, but it gives you a context for what you're pursuing right and but i know you also have to give it some time to test it out and see if it's a good context for you or not like with yoga for myself for example i just stopped my membership there which is sad you know bittersweet um i love yoga i love bikram the problem what i keep running into is i am running a company running a business taking care of myself taking care of you know our house here doing starting up my youtube channel and getting yeah, dude, involved dude. in that is a huge amount of work. People, I put out a five minute video. It takes four hours to edit, you know, whatever that yeah. is. There's a lot of behind the scenes work. And that's especially true of running your own company, a huge amount of behind the scenes. Yes. My office hours might say I work from one to eight thirty PM, but I am working as soon as I get up from nine o'clock in the morning yeah. or whatever. That's in loose quotes, <laughs> right? Maybe that's the only time I see clients in my office is one to eight thirty, but I'm working constantly. And I realized that yoga, the way I was doing it, Bikram awesome. I love it, but I don't have three hours a day to spend to do that. It takes a half an hour to drive, get there. You sit around for a little bit, maybe 15 minutes to drive there. You sit around, you wait for class to start. Class is an hour and a half. And then um, I'm a chick who's got relatively long hair. I mean, it's back past my shoulders. <laughs> you have to take a shower. You have to dry your hair. You have to do makeup. You have to get yourself to be presentable to the world to go back to work, to the office. And, you know, so there's just, right, right, it's yeah. so much time. That I did it for a little while. Yeah. Several months I did yeah. a lot. But then I said, you know what? I just need this time to spend otherwise. I need, I have to use this time differently than spending three hours every day at yoga. That was just, I don't have the ability to do that at this moment. I do, let me rephrase that. I do have the ability that is an option, but it doesn't fit into the context of my life the way that I want it to. It's not helping me to necessarily achieve the goals that I want to achieve. Right, but I love right. to compete in yoga. Yeah, that would be amazing. <laughs> What, but do I have the time or the, the desire to spend three hours a day training? No, I don't. Not right now. And that's okay. Yeah. It's yeah. got to work with what works in your context. Well, one of our dear friends talks about a reason, a season, a lifetime. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, sometimes you, you have things in your life for a reason. Sometimes they're in there for just a season. Yeah. Sometimes it's there for a lifetime. Yeah. And you don't know until you try some of that stuff out. And you sometimes know, seasons come and go. Come and you go. You can have the same season twice. Absolutely. Know? Well, I've been... I've been you know, uh, w- with martial arts, I've been training since I was like 20, Yeah. but it's been off and on. I've, I've had a couple stretches where I was consistent, but it's mm-hmm. not, it's, uh, you know, injuries and life changes and yeah. stuff, but it doesn't mean I hate that stuff or I'm right. never going to do it again. It's just like, okay, you know, it's something you can come back to and, mm-hmm. and just like picking up an old instrument or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you kind of can reactivate those old frameworks yeah. and start doing that again. But yeah, I would, m- my, uh, as I've gotten slightly older and uh, mo- moderately <laughs> more wise, I guess, um, it, it's really where, like you and I are married, and mm-hmm. it's a little bit different when you're you're single as far as making goals and so forth. Uh, but now we're like, you know, planning on getting a house, starting mm-hmm. a family. Like we're playing for keeps now. Right. So for for me, the extra time I'm spending on stuff are things that I know I can continue with. Like my yeah. YouTube channel, the show that I want to build 
is something that I can do for a really long time. Yeah. And I have I have like three more shows planned yeah. as far as the things that I want to build and do that I know I can execute on. And like this, this scales too. Mm-hmm. The Painter and the Pixie mm-hmm. scales. There's things that I want to add to and, and do with that as well. Mm-hmm. So like, um, but again, they're all in the context of right. our, our lives. I wanted this to be something we did together. I yeah. wanted... Um, you know, be it a way to, for your clients to, to hear you and, and reach Have other some good people. resources for yeah, people. Yeah, and, and great resources for, for other folks. And, uh, and that's kind of like, and just hopefully be informative mm-hmm. and entertaining and helpful and, and super helpful and, uh, you know, high production value as mm-hmm. always. Um, but yeah, so that's sexier yeah. goals. And then yeah. I, I like having the purpose be the driver i like yeah, that I think being the pull that's a winner right there versus making the goal and then going and this is my last thing i'll say on frameworks and goals and things yeah. um rocket ship versus a car yeah let's uh, talk about that. a lot of the ways people will make frameworks and i have done this many yeah, times me too. Uh, business is a perfect example uh i'll use our my brother and i did this company called vassar brothers vending mm-hmm. it was horrible uh we, yeah. <laughs> we originally bought like 10 machines these are coin like Qu- turning like quarter, gumball machines yeah, like basically that you could imagine. Large, we had these four that were called Terminators. Yeah. I think they had 12 chambers. Wow. So like you see them in the middle of the mall, you yeah. know? Yeah, <laughs> and they would spin. Like it was oh, on a, it was a, wow. it would spin and there was, you High know, tech. Yeah, three stacks of four different chambers Dude. in quarter turn. And then we had, my, when we, <laughs> we had one in my brother's room. Oh my gosh. And then before we go train Muay Thai, we'd bring <laughs> in some quarters and because we had them filled. Because why not? Why not? Uh, we, we, we both get like handfuls of uh, peanut M&Ms yes. and stuff because we had these in our house. Um, yeah. So anyway, we that that went from 10 machines to my brother being like, yo, I just bought 120 oh on gosh. eBay. I'm like, what? <laughs> and uh, we drove, wow. we got up at like four in the morning, drove a 24 foot box truck to Ohio and bought 120 vending wow. machines. And they have then, people who sold them to you are probably like, good riddance. <laughs> <laughs> and these dopes and that's a that's these. a weird thing i know how to do um i know how to do the maintenance for the interior of a quarter turn yeah. machine because i was the one responsible for cleaning them breaking them apart and figure out how they all worked yeah. um and it was awful because some of them were filled with maggots because they hadn't cleaned oh them out gosh. from before Woo. Oh, Jeremy. So- <laughs> go on skip past that yeah so yeah well th- yeah, you think i felt i was the one that had to deal with it yeah. um and then the problem was we had uh you know, we'd never run a vending business before. Yeah. Um, we had to get all locations. You have to find locations to put these things. Mm. So, so people like basically rent the machines. No, you, well. It doesn't matter. We can go yeah, on. This does, is, doesn't it, have anything to do it, with the car or it, the rocket ship. It, you can keep it going. It doesn't Sorry. matter. <laughs> the, but the point is like when we did Vassar Brothers Vending, we got incorporated. We got insurance. We got all of these things. We had all of our ducks in a row. Yeah. Um, we bought 120 machines. We you know, we had cold storage, we had warm storage, we had pallets of candy, wow. we had all that stuff, and the business failed because it was not viable at all. Because we didn't know what we didn't know what the hell we were doing. That's a, that's an example of building a rocket ship mm-hmm. in the form of a business because you had the goal of this was you know still really popular passive income, uh-huh. uh, where it's great if it's working well, but we didn't have any experience in that area. Yeah. It was really hard to get machines placed and keep them placed, and then we had. We go away on vacation, and the Mike and Ikes would sweat and jam up the machines, and like and they put <laughs> and out. Someone of, had to fix it. They had to put out of order signs on them, and then like it, it was just and you a make no money. Huge mess, huge mess. And then that story ended with us losing, I don't know, close to twelve grand, and we had like oh nine hundred pounds of Mike and Ikes and nine hundred pounds of hot tamales. We can do anything <laughs> with. We had to like sell them on eBay. It was awful. Well. Um, but. The, the point is like we what we could have done the alternative to building a rocket which is like you have a very narrow goal once that lock that rocket launches if you didn't do all your calculations correctly in the beginning it's just a totally gonna miss it's a total failure total failure. total failure and you're gonna be out a lot of money and time or yeah. whatever your goal is now the alternative way to do it and it will keep it with the business example is to uh, do it like you're driving a car mm-hmm. a car when you take off, you can, as you gain speed, mm-hmm. you can change course. You can make a left turn, make a right turn. You can hit the brakes. You can slow down. You can speed up. Mm-hmm. And that's a much nicer way to do that. A way yeah. to do that with vending would be like, start with 10 machines. Yeah. See how that goes. 
and then don't necessarily get incorporated or get insurance. You don't or need hot, any. Cold storage. You really don't. Uh, Pallets of candy. Yeah. On on a business note, start with maybe like a ten pound bag of candy. You don't really need to worry about it until you're making revenue. Until yeah. you're making consistent money, <laughs> that's when you want to get all your ducks in a row. Yeah. So, um, and that's how I would say to do. You can approach fitness that way. You can approach all of these. You don't want like the loss to be cataclysmic. Right. Where if it doesn't need to be, like if right. you're like, are right, we're going to drive this car? We're going to see how it goes. We're going to adjust accordingly. Yeah. You're going at a much slower speed, yeah. still with the same end goal in mind, but you can course correct a whole lot more easily Correct. when correct. needed. So, yeah. and those are, and then I just bringing back to self care in the seasons mm-hmm. is that, um, you know, using the summer as a time to really take a look at those frameworks. It's a yeah. way you can, uh, particularly if you are affected by the seasons and, you know, can be a little down in the dumps and uh, depressed when the winter time comes around, particularly after the holidays, I find mm. it's a rough, rough time for, for folks. But um, there's nothing else to look forward it's to. It's true. It's true. Except for more winter. <laughs> uh, but like thinking through like, all right, this is how I'm going to feel. So what what is it do I want to stay consistent with through those yeah. seasons and then set that up ahead of time? Yep. And those are things that having a, you know, you're my wife, you're my like life mm-hmm. partner now mm-hmm. is yeah, like, hey. I've never really had that element of like, Hey, how do you want to get through this season? Yeah. And then one thing I thought too is that we should, we're really shitty at this, Plan, yeah. <laughs> planning more fun, putting more frameworks around our fun. Yeah, that's true. So that we maintain having fun. Like you and me are great at living together and yeah, stuff. Yeah, and like normal stuff, but we don't um, almost ever like go out and do stuff. We're terrible at having fun. Well, yeah. I don't, I don't really think, uh. But like going to the park is fun. But like we should do something that you and I would actually both value. Yeah. Like we've tried hiking and stuff before. Yeah. Like I don't think either of us give a shit about hiking. I like hiking. I guess so. It's fun. <laughs> but just like maybe e- you don't like it so much. That's why it's not a good fit. Well, I, I like it. I just usually want to run. I just want to go. That's faster. true. You're used to trail that, running, so that's, that's a bit different. That's my problem because I'm what? like, look at these cool trees. Look at these rocks. Look, there's a little stream over well, here. Imagine fairies probably lived there. Well, for, and you're like, come on, where are we running? Yeah. For, <laughs> for instance, I thought I thought of that. I know a lot of good parks where I ran yeah. and did trails and stuff. You are, uh, you know, you're gonna be vlogging and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you know, I thought I could get, you know, borrowing Megan's uh, lens. Mm-hmm. And like we could go do something like, uh, you know, I'll shoot nature photography yeah. and then you vlog about it or whatever. Right. And we go on like a hike. Something That's like that. We're, we're both kind of doing stuff that we like. And that goes back to developing the context again yeah. and again. And yeah. I wanted to say this. You said this earlier. Well, kind of. I'm paraphrasing for nutrition because I always do that. But reason a season or a lifetime. Just like with developing things that we like to do together, we had we were extremely restricted at the beginning of our relationship because I was so sick. Yeah, well, we couldn't do much. We and couldn't, I, you were you were sick, and I blew my back and out. You couldn't move. You and, couldn't sit down. And had a nerve impingement for eight months, and yeah. was doped up on Vicodin. So yeah. like, yeah, it was a rough rough was more deal, than eight man. Months. We did November not to August. We didn't have. Uh, like fun dating people yeah. like hey, it's dating I'm like, like sit home and watch a movie and it eat was, it was it was like just trying to survive really yeah Which, so anyway the yeah. context is reason or season or a lifetime i love that because i talk to people about this all the time one of my goals as a nutritional therapist is to help people to determine what is the best diet for them yeah. for now because there is no one diet fits all right and there is no one diet fits you forever Because especially as females, we go through a whole lot of hormonal fluctuations more drastically than men. And what is the best diet for me today is probably not going to be the best diet for me when I'm 60. You know what I mean? Things change over time. The context changes and that's okay. That's why I love what you're talking about learning to build frameworks for yourself. It's almost like getting to know yourself well enough to know what's going to work for you now. That's why you say, okay, in the summer when I'm feeling good, I'm going to make my menu for the winter now so that when I get there and I have options, I, I can be on autopilot. I can have my smoothie bags prepped so to speak, so that you set yourself up for success no matter what and, and have the understanding, the grace for yourself to say, I'm not a failure. If it doesn't work, I just have to change the plan. I need to find another plan of action that works best for me because maybe when you came up with the plan of action, it was beautiful, fantastic. When you get into it, maybe you have to make some adjustments. Go for it. You're in a car. You're not in a rocket ship. You have the ability to make those adjustments. Right. Right. Hopefully you're in a car, not a rocket ship. And and that's a very, kind way to care for yourself and kind of like 
um, you know, I always feel like when I actually pull it off, I'm like, oh, good looking out, Past Jeremy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Past Jeremy. Yeah, way to go, buddy. Just uh, bump yourself. Yeah, <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> like, way to not completely screw myself yeah. over. And also, too, just building some grace mm-hmm. into whatever Absolutely. whatever framework you are building. And, and some uh, a better, a more apt term might be margin. Mm, um, that's a good one. So it's something you alluded to earlier. If you're starting a vlog and in your running your in your business is picking up because you kind of did it to yourself which i think is hilarious because because we're recording a podcast mm-hmm. you're doing a vlog and you have a business well the that and the vlog feed into the business so yeah. that's going to get busier too yep so it's like yeah going to yoga you know for a huge chunk that's just not where your head's at yeah even if it was only my my used to be minimum three times a week like i just don't have nine yeah. hours a week to spend on well, that anymore plus you have it's a whole work day you have quite a bit of <laughs> Uh, technical <laughs> knowledge that you're developing too yeah. that that um you know the vlog or the videos that you're putting out the technical piece will take less and less effort uh-huh. over time so that gets easier yeah and then some margin opens up in another part of your life and then you kind of feel like okay i can pursue this or that or whatever mm-hmm. so but anyway I guess treat the, yourself like someone you're responsible for helping yeah man and then uh you know the better you know yourself uh the better you're able to care for yourself. So mm-hmm. a little introspection, mm-hmm. some uh, observer role. And yeah. uh, you the know. better you know yourself and the better you can define your goals. Yes. I think it's a little yeah. bit um, incorrect to say you have to have an extraordinarily excessively specific goal. No. Because you do need to give yourself that breadth of freedom, right? That a little bit, that's where the margin comes into play. You've got a one, a goal you are aiming for, like whatever yeah. your fitness goal may be. Okay, go for that. Like, I want to look good. I want to feel good. I want to have good energy. I want to be able to lift things and move things around in this house without you being here. You know what I mean? Like, the, <laughs> the, the, Jamie, help me. <laughs> this thing's, like, Gus is 30 pounds. I can easily pick him up. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. It, what if he was 60 pounds? Probably not as easily. <laughs> so yeah, it's like, yeah. those are the kinds of goals that I have. It's not like, okay, I need to lift 500 pounds by next Tuesday. Like, yeah. you don't need to be that extremely specific, but giving yourself something to aim at is so important. A lot of us just kind of wander around like, eh, better. Yeah. But you need yeah. something to aim at and you, you need to know yourself well enough or like, okay, what are the steps I need to take to get to that thing? Yeah. And, and uh, you know, coming back to context too, you want to see what you have available to yourself. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's a huge one too. Like if I said, okay, I want to get really good at snowboarding. Now's, <laughs> now's not the time. Like now is not the time. Yeah. So you want to see what's available to you, what you have, you know, what your options are. And, mm-hmm. and uh, we've talked about kind of fitness for, for life and that kind of stuff yeah. with like, you know, even, even gardening, like that's yeah. a great, where my mom was like hauling 40 pound bags of mulch yep. yesterday. So like, yep. that's a big, super impressive. and she can that's squat good. with them and do all that stuff. And she's not like, Oh, I got a workout, but like, that's right. The fact and she's that not she can, totally toast the next day because right. she's used right. to those types of things. So yeah, it's um, context, know yourself. Give yourself a goal to aim at. Sexier goals. Sexier goals. Se- something that actually gets you excited. Mm-hmm. And uh, my last little bit, and then we'll then we'll uh, wrap this up. But if you are, if you whatever you nerd out about, pay pay attention to that. Mm, if you yeah. if you have something that makes time go away, and you're like, holy shit, it's five hours later or whatever. Yeah. What's that How thing? Did that happen? And then just just think about that a little bit when you're when you're kind of pursuing things. Yeah. So I'm pro people being nerdier. That's mm-hmm. where a lot of good stuff happens. So um, anything else, love? That's good, man. Cool, cool. All right, guys. Well, uh, we will see you in the outro. Mm-hmm. There you go, folks. We uh, you know kind of got through some good stuff yeah. there. If you guys so. enjoyed that, also wanted to say for anybody in our area, which is Bucks County. They just completed the loop at Peace Valley Park. They did. That's so true. So if you are looking to start maybe some fitness goals, if you want to really, uh, you know, depending on your level of uh, physical acumen, mm-hmm. you could always, that's like a six mile loop now. And now you don't have to exit out on a creek road. You can just walk all the way all around. All the way around. Super on a, easy. On a dedicated path. It's awesome. So, Lake Alina, Peace Valley Park, highly recommend it. It's where I have run many, many a lap. Yeah, so it's pretty good. Um, so, and I just thought that would be a nice yeah, on ramping. It is really nice. I think so it's great. forth. Or do you have to loop or whatever? You yeah, know, whatever you want to do. Okay, you should, you should get yourself going. Yeah. Point is, l- l- less barriers to entry. Yeah. Thanks um, for listening, everybody. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed our show today. Yeah, and uh, 
I guess what are all of our things? Yeah, you could check us out on Instagram, uh, the Painter and the Pixie. And, yeah, uh, show notes are going to be up on our website as usual yep. and all of your listening platforms. You know, all that's good stuff. Yep, yep, yep. So, uh, yeah, thanks again, guys, for listening. Super appreciate it. And uh, I guess we'll see you next week. But in the meantime, uh, relax and be kind to one another. See you. Bye. Amazing.